Hello, this topic is being married to someone with anger issues. My name is Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. Hopefully you're already a subscriber. And our approach has nothing to do with psychology. We are not Western psychologists. I used to be a divorce mediator. So my approach is very different. When I was a divorce mediator, I encountered anger. Personally, I had tremendous anger issues. In the 90s, 1990s, long time ago, isn't it? I resolved that I would get rid of my anger and I couldn't do it until I started working with clients and then out of their need, I created a system called the So Technique that allows people to get rid of any habit, any habit, even though we're told we can't do it. But your situation is different. You're living with a spouse who can't control their anger. I'm not going to lecture you. I'm going to give you some very practical things to do. And I'm also going to explain anger a little bit so that you have a context within which you can do these things. Number one, anger is an appendage. It is like a demon that comes in and attacks the person who is angry. They don't know that. They're not aware of that because we're not taught to watch our own minds, to watch ourselves. It's called dispassionate introspection, when we are aware of our thoughts and our behaviors and things like anger, fear, jealousy, and those kind of things. We're not aware of it. We just think, how dare they? We don't even go, I am angry. Sometimes we might go, I am angry. We might be that aware. So remember, your husband or your wife isn't aware of how they are right then. If you point it out, in fact, they'll go, damn right, I'm angry. And then they justify it. So I know what you're going through. Not easy. Because you are the victim of their explosions. So number one, remember this. You're not a victim unless you choose to be a victim of whatever form of outburst they are choosing. And their outbursts are intended to affect you. And they know that it will affect you because no one knows you better than they do. So if you're aware that this is happening to them pretty much involuntarily, you have the power through your free will and lifting yourself above the fray, you have the power to step back and not be a victim of what's coming. But you don't want them to know that you're not being a victim of it because the way anger works on our mind the mind has an expectation that it's going to affect the victim. So keep this in mind. Number one, they're not aware of what's going on in their own mind. They don't know how anger works. And with what little I've shared with you, you don't really know completely either. But trust me, what's happening is that they are a victim of their own anger. You don't have to be though, because you could step back, recognizing it's not personal. They still love you, but they can't feel that love at that moment. The outburst is a product of the mind. We are not our minds. We are the soul. So their mind is doing this usually because almost all the time, it is afraid of something. So we are all victims of our biology. Our biology means 
Our body is comprised of trillions of cells. Each one of these cells is governed, you might say, by the drive to survive. It's also known as self-preservation. And its number one defense against all its perceived enemies is the wall called anger. Because it's afraid of being annihilated. And the mind runs with this because we never learned about governing our own minds, about controlling our own minds. So this is happening. Your first step is back. Step back. Tell yourself, I'm not going to take this personally. Meaning, step two, I'm not going to react to this outburst. I'm not going to cower. That's a reaction too. I'm not going to fight back. That's a reaction. I'm not going to run away. What I am going to do is step three. I'm going to lift myself above and I'm going to see my poor wife, my poor husband is suffering like crazy. So number four, get into a mindset of compassion for them. So you're turning the tables. Instead of being the victim here, you're becoming the protector of your spouse, which is what you're supposed to be anyway. Under all conditions, you're supposed to put them ahead of you. Again, do not be victimized. Do not be a doormat. Step back, lift yourself above what's going on, and wait for your moment. Your moment, because anger doesn't let you in. Your moment to say, and it can come out of nowhere, honey, I love you and I'm sorry. You're not apologizing. You're not apologizing. You're sorry that they're going through this, but you don't want to say that out loud because it'll trigger their anger even more. So by doing this, that's step five, by the way. Step five is utter some compassionate thing that lets them know you're on their side. Now, it's going to attack you again, maybe even again. At some point, because anger has a shelf life, it'll start diffusing. But in the meantime, you have to keep repeating these steps. And that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Anger is a huge issue for everybody because we're untrained. In our courses for men and women, we at attack anger. We let you know that you can completely get rid of anger, completely. Because when they're getting angry, 50% of the time the person who's Receiving the anger reacts with anger. It may be subtle. It may be aggressive. But we all have to deal with anger because of our bodies. Even though we're not our bodies and we're not our minds, we've never learned to control those. And the purpose of marriage is to be happy. The purpose of marriage is to experience unconditional love. The purpose of marriage is to feel harmony like we never feel anywhere else. So anger is definitely a problem for most people. Don't let it be one for you. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. I hope you like this video and I hope you tell everybody you like it. You could even share this video. You could definitely subscribe. You could leave a comment. You could visit our website. God bless you and take care. Thank you.